Hi, I'm Kara Pograba. Welcome to Bright Hope Creations. Today we're coloring this winter bear. So I'm using this stitched rectangle and a zigzag stitched rectangle. And this is a little piece from our snow globe. And I'm using the Geo Snowflake stencil and featuring today the Hey Winter. And I'm using this bear, some trees, a hat, and a candy cane. I'll start by ink blending some Spun Sugar Distress ink with a blender brush onto the Geo Snowflake stencil and I'm getting a smooth coat throughout. So I just wanted it one color, one layer, uh, no blending of colors here. But look how beautiful that is, even just in one color. And I'll cut that out with the stitched rectangle and that'll be our background. And now we're gonna put together this bear. So I'm gonna stamp out the hat first and mask that so that I can stamp the bear to look like it's wearing the hat. So it's a little bit behind the hat. I'll take off the mask and there he is. Oh, it's so cute with that hat. All right, now I'm using the hat on the curve of his arm just to uh, be a mask for the candy cane so he looks like he's holding that as well. Put in some trees and another tree. I love the style of these trees. And then now this bear comes with, you have the option of putting a sweater on him when you put these little stamps to create the ribbing for his sweater. So you can have this bear with or without a sweater. So there's the little cuffs and now we're ready to color. And for these trees, I am kind of using the style of the trees, not gonna color the whole thing, just parts of it so that I leave some white, kind of to indicate that it's it has snow on, on it, but also just kind of giving it a, a style, I think that kind of reflects the, the look of this tree. And this is a YG95, that's as dark as I go. So I used a 91, 93, and 95. And for the trunks, I'm using a W3 and a W4. I'm keeping with olive, warm grays, and pinks today. So now it's time to get that bare shaded. And I came through with a very light W00 to find my shadows and now I'm just going right over those with my W1 and this is as dark as I'm going to get with his shadows and it's just finding where the darkest areas would be so under that sweater under his little tummy kind of showing the uh, crook of his foot there and just anywhere that you think there should be some shadow. There's a little pause on the bottom. And then I'll blend that out. And you can see I put the shadow over by his eyes going um, from the snout to the hat just to give it a look of depth that those eyes are back a little bit. And now getting under the snout and just giving some shape to the face and neck and down to the hands and and all the way down just blending that out towards the centers of the bear and then I'll come in with the W00 and blend those out even further so that we have a nice transition for this white polar bear so your bear could be a brown bear black bear grizzly bear I don't know Anyway, this one's a polar bear today. Now, the uh, muzzle needs a little bit of shape to it to show that it's curved. And so I put some shading underneath it and a little darker under that just to make it look like it's forward, but still shaded uh, where it would be underneath in the light. Blend that all the way out with my lightest and a little more shading on his forehead. He's going to have some rosy cheeks, or maybe she, I don't know if this is a 
boy bear, girl bear. And I'm going to blend those in, those cheeks, a little bit with the lightest W00 and a little bit with the colorless blender on the right side. My light source is coming from the upper right. Now, this candy cane, like I said, I'm staying with pink, olive, and warm grays today. So this candy cane is going to have some pink and white stripes. And I just blend the RV11 up to the RV00, and I'm starting on the hat. I'm finding where I want some shadow uh, and depth with the uh, different folds in the hat. And then I'm going to follow those again with my darker color. This is the RV11 and really define those shadows where those folds might be in the hat or how, however, I'm trying to give it some shape. Once I have this all shaded, I can come in with my lightest and just blend it out further into the hat. So I'm going to call this a girl bear. She's wearing a pretty pink hat today. <laughs> All right, I will be coming back to this hat later to give it um, some more depth, but for now I wanted to put in those shadows again so that I didn't lose them. And the little pom-poms on the hat are getting some texture with a W0 and some shading on the candy cane. Time to color her nose, and this is a W4. Not going too dark on her nose. I don't want it to be the thing that you see first, the, the focus, so I'm, I'm keeping it. It's darker, but not as dark as I usually go on a nose like that. Getting all the little details and time for the sweater. Now, you didn't miss anything, so I'm just going over where I had gone before with my darkest color here. Um, and this darkest color is a YG95. So I found those shadows first in the YG93, and now I'm just going right over where those shadows are in the 95. So on the left side, where his shoulder kind of uh, bends and underneath those arms and under the the sleeves where they would where, where they would have the shadow and I'm just gonna blend that out into the rest of the sweater I already created a card like the one we're doing today and you'll see it later as I kind of um, compare the two together as I'm coloring and it's exactly the same. I mean, well, when you're coloring, nothing's exactly the same, but um, it's the same style, same colors, and the same design. So I'm getting the YG95, picking that up with the YG93 and blending it into the sweater. And there's a little line there for, for an a shape of the arm. It's it's going to be subtle. And now with the YG91 I'm coming in and I'm doing the same thing, just finding the places that it needs to be blended further out into the sweater. And I'm leaving some white um, edges, kind of the same style as those trees. So I don't think I leave as much as you see there on that one arm that's already kind of colored, but I will be leaving some. So just giving it that same type of type of look. And I'm really blending quite a bit with this YG91. I want to get things real cohesive. So now I can come back in with the darkest color, the YG95, and putting in some detail for that ribbing. And I'll do that on the bottom as well, and on the cuffs. 
But that's the thing I see with Copic markers is that we can layer color just like you would with watercolor or any other medium. Um, it's coming back again and putting in those dark shadows. I mean, look how much darker that YG95 looks now because it had gotten blended away. So layering colors, I think, really brings in more depth. I will blend it out as I'm doing here with the 93, but I'm not blending it away as much. And blending that 93 back into the sweater, but you can see it's not as much as I did the first time. All right, I'm gonna darken up this candy cane. Now that we have that sweater, I can give that more depth and we're starting on the background. So I first came in with my lightest RV triple zero and I'm just going over those lines to show you where I put in these snow drifts with the RV00 and that top line I'm trying to make the hill horizon because we're going to cut this out. Um, I could have done the sky but I wanted the stencil background to be the sky. I wanted to show that off a little bit more and you'll see that I will put the entire uh, panel onto the background stenciled uh, area and you'll see that it it doesn't show off the backing so that's why I've got that horizon and I'll cut that out but back to the snowdrift so I'm taking the RV triple zero and just softening up all those lines that I put in there and now I'm warming them up with the warm gray and this is the double zero and it softens up the the slopes a little bit. So I want it pink, but I want it to be a warm pink. The Spun Sugar Distress Ink is kind of a, a warmer or a, I don't know, I wouldn't call it a gray pink, but it's it's got this kind of look to it, I think. So I wanted to reflect that in the, in the colors I used on the card. You can see, just taking my time and um, putting in those shadows. Now here, it's a little bit darker, nearer to the feet. This bear would have a bigger shadow cast in front of her, but I didn't want that to be a focus either. So I'm giving her shadow, but I'm not giving her what would be her full shadow. All right, so between the gray and the pink, uh, just going back and forth so that I have a nice uh, pinky gray color and where I had that light warm gray I'm putting in a very light pink so you can see the way that I'm holding the marker is on the side giving it kind of more of a wispy look instead of straight up and down now I'm going to warm up that hat as well with the W0 and blend that into the hat a bit and then I'll come back and pink that up next so th that's what I'm doing I'm just coming back and forth with the warm grays and the pinks to make it look like it's it's the color instead of parts are gray and parts are pink. And this RV10 then kind of settles settles the look of this hat. It gives it the depth I was looking for and and it's it's all set. So now I can give her some more depth. Now that everything is colored around her, I can see where she can have a little more shadow by her eyes and the hat under the hat. It's the same as with the sweater, just layering the shades. So gives it a lot more depth that way. Now you can see I have the other card next to it 
And I was kind of looking at it to decide how I wanted to finish things off and wanted to uh, just define the ribbing on the sweater a little bit more. And I also wanted to blend in with that eat with the YG91 up on a sweater up at the top a little bit better. You know, sometimes it's helpful just to step away and come back and look at at it to see, oh, that could be shaded a little more or take a photo of it. I'm surprised how much more I see of an image when I take a photo than when I'm just looking at it straight on. It's kind of strange that way. Working on a little more detail on the snout. So what do you call that? Is it a muzzle, a snout? I'd like to know. If you leave a comment, I'd like to hear. <laughs> All right, this is getting cut out with the zigzag stitched rectangle. And here's the difference if I left the whole rectangle. So that's why I want to trim that out. And so I did. And then with a Prismacolor brush tip marker. I like to go around the edges from the back and it just hides any of the white that I might not have cut real well. And I'm going to start on the sentiment. Uh, this sentiment comes from the same stamp set, Hey Winter, and it fit really well into this piece that goes with the snow globe. You can see I made the first one up top and so I'm stamping that out and this is a solid piece because it's it's not supposed to be a sentiment and so the way you get around that is just cut it all on something else which I had already cut and then tape that on and run them both through the big shot and it cut out perfectly and I'm putting on some foam fun foam and adhering that to my panel. She looks beautiful in her Geo Snowflake pink sky. And there we are. So I'm going to adhere the sentiment right on the bottom of the snow hill. And then I'll take the whole thing and adhere it to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. Here she is on the left. I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.